growing up in Mumbai uh, gave me a lot of opportunities to do different things. So when I was like uh, during my early childhood, I liked to play cricket. And at one point of time, I thought I will be I will become a professional cricket player. And then I think another activity which I enjoyed in Mumbai was swimming. I think I I liked swimming pretty much. And at one point of time, I thought like, hey, you know, swimming is a lot of fun. I should think about like competitive swimming or like even like get trained for scuba diving and then become a professional scuba diver. But after some time, like when I was like junior in high school, I started learning about programming. So I was also doing some web designing or some HTML, basic HTML coding or something. And then finally, I came to the field of science. I was thinking about... Uh, chemical engineering as a profession because I was really enjoying the subject chemistry and mathematics. In my senior year of my college, I thought that engineering should be expanded to other fields. That's how I focused on biomedical engineering. I realized at that point of time that uh, a patient suffering from cancer has to has a lot of pain during the chemotherapy treatment and the clinical outcome is not very good. So that motivated me to read more about how I can help my help by applying my engineering principles in the field of uh, medicine and that's how I started looking at the existing treatment and then I realized that there is a need to improve the clinical outcome of existing cancer treatment and also reduce the side effect and cost and that led me to work on drug delivery field which I'm doing at the University of Delaware now. What I'm focusing now is I work with uh, material which is very similar to contact lenses. It's called hydrogel. So this kind of material I use, I make them using a chemistry. So it's highly interdisciplinary field. So initial part involves use of chemistry and then material science or material engineering. And then I transform into more biomedical field or in vivo or in vitro cell studies. The problem is huge. So if I can come up with a solution, that will be awesome. There is a lot of potential because the cost of drugs are pretty high in particular disease treatments such as cancer therapy and there are side effects so to minimize the side effect and reduce the cost we are working on drug delivery carriers so that for example if I have cancer on my skin in this particular area even if I take the drug orally it won't go anywhere in my body but just go at this particular site. The question here is why we need to study if the hydrogel is stable or soft so imagine if you are having an injectable drug delivery carrier in your body, you need to make sure it's not very hard because if it's like very hard as metal, you will be uncomfortable and your body will also show some foreign body response. Mm -hmm. On the other side, if the material is too soft, what will happen is that the mesh won't be very intact, so it will be like very loosely bound. So what that will do is that the encapsulated drug will just flow out even if the network is still intact. So we need to find an optimum balance at which it is still biocompatible, it's still injectable, and it's still acceptable by the body, but at the same time the drug should not just flow out of the network by itself, it should only flow out when the hydrogel network degrades. So in this particular experiment what we're, what we're trying to do is grow cells on a plastic plate, so this is the condition that we want to start before the experiment, so the pink color what we're seeing here is actually the growth media and the cells are at the bottom. And then using the microscope, what we're trying to do today is not the actual experiment, but what we're trying to focus if the cells are alive, if they're growing nicely. And if they're growing nicely, then we can seed them on a different transfers, and then we can begin the experiment. So what we're seeing here is that the cells are happy, they're growing, uh, they're growing in a cluster. So this is kind of exciting. And once I have enough number of cells, then I will be using them for next set of experiments where we can assess if the hydrogels are degrading and releasing the cargo molecule, which in turn are killing the cancer cells. So this, that's pretty much exciting. There are several times the reaction does not work the way I want, but at one time, like if maybe like after 10 times, after filling the reaction 10 times, there is one time the reaction works. And yeah, that, that's a pretty exciting thing. And then I need to start thinking about, okay, if the reaction is working, what next step I have to do. So it's always like continuous thinking. I need to critically think and generate hypothesis so I can solve the problem. Mm -hmm.